Back in Lafayette, the loose caboose closed its doors in 2017 when its original owner, Cheryl Ann Landry, became ill. Landry opened the doors to the booths in 1984, but longtime customer Katie Gidry is now stepping in to bring the iconic dive bar back. We spoke with her about the plans for the reopening. I had somebody who recently got engaged to be married in the booths because the booths is reopening. They're coming to get married here. So that was really cool. People are very, very excited, um, which really makes me more nervous. <laughs> Governor Edwards' testimony and a probe of Ronald Green's death will be moved one week because of the special session on redistricting. State lawmakers are asking the governor and his top attorneys to testify. The testimony will be before the bipartisan committee investigating allegations of a cover-up in Green's death in 2019. The request came days after the Associated Press reported Edwards and his staff watched footage of Green's death months before it went public. Now, the governor has said he saw the video at the same time Green's family saw it. Meanwhile, on the subject of redistricting, state Republican lawmakers are waiting to see if a judge will put her ruling against the state's congressional map on hold while they appeal. Unless the judge's ruling is blocked by the courts, the six-day special session will begin in one week. It's set to end June 20th. That's the deadline the judge has set for drawing a new map. The judge says the current map violates Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. Earlier this year, lawmakers passed the map that includes just one majority black district. The governor vetoed the map, arguing there should be two majority black districts based on the latest census data, but lawmakers overrode the governor's veto. In Calcasieu Parish, there's a need for election commissioners. According to the clerk of court, there are only about half the workers they need to run large elections. Co commissioners can earn up to $200 per election if they work. If you're interested in learning more, there are classes coming up on June 14th and also the 16th. Well, former Saints quarterback Drew Brees is officially stepping down from his NBC Sports commentator role. NBC Sports chairman says Brees will not be a part of this year's NFL and Notre Dame coverage. That's not Drew Brees. Brees said uh, is said to be stepping away from spending more time with his family. There's right. Drew. The chairman stated that Breeze's lifestyle choice is, quote, totally understandable. And coming up right here on Acadiana's News Channel at 6, there's a new champion of Louisiana seafood, the winning dish that got her crowned queen. Coming up in just a bit. And I'd like to compete for seafood eating, but not uh, tonight. We're talking hot temperatures. We'll have more coming up right after the break. From the KATC Weatherland. Here's Rob's forecast. Welcome back. Well, the heat stays on thanks to this big ridge of high pressure that is built over the area. Now, over the next couple of days, it's going to shift back to the west. I may open up the door for a late afternoon, early evening storm, Friday, Saturday especially. There might be one or two roaming around, but essentially all the nasty storms going around that ridge of high pressure. So we're staying hot and mostly dry. Meanwhile, stormy pattern from Oklahoma to uh, Alabama last couple of days, and it's continuing again this afternoon with strong to severe storms in Mississippi into Alabama, where we do have severe thunderstorm watches going. Some active weather farther to the north and back to the west, but right now we're under this ridge of high pressure that's going to remain dominant. Only feature that could mess us up on our temperature forecast, well, actually two, cloud cover. Some high cloud cover could limit your daytime highs, and it's always wind direction. Now, if we're getting a good south wind out of the Gulf of Mexico, pretty hard to get much higher than 92, 93 degrees. We did get to 93 today. Today, uh, but tomorrow we expect a westerly wind and when the winds are out of the west or the northwest or the north this time of year, we can easily get into not only the mid 90s, but upper 90s as well. So we're probably going to see that in the days to come, maybe down the line into next week. In the near term, again, fair to partly cloudy skies overnight tonight. Few showers stay off to the north of us tomorrow. Another hot one out there. Now the graph model indicating a slightly better chance of a shower trying to roll in by late afternoon, early evening, but we can't go much higher than 10% on the rain chances, 20% for tomorrow evening. We move on into Friday, much the same, a quiet start to the day, warm and humid, and then into the afternoon, showers and storms, and maybe some severe ones, mainly over toward eastern Louisiana. We're going to still get in the mid-90s. That heat index is going to be near 105 or so, and much the same as we do it all over again Saturday. By Saturday afternoon, we do think we're going to see a slightly better chance of storms, 
especially into the evening hours with action coming in from the northeast. So we'll uh, go with that for right now. Big picture across the tropics as we take a look at the moisture in the atmosphere. Notice it's kind of pooling over in the eastern Gulf of Mexico with a trailing edge back through just to the east of us. And that's why we think we'll see a slightly better chance of a storm come Saturday, perhaps Sunday, but not much higher than 30 or 40 percent at this point. Meanwhile, deep tropics, we are looking for development in the Pacific and uh, maybe something also going in the Atlantic. But right now in the next 10 days, that takes us out quite a while. We're looking at action just in the Pacific, but some moisture may move into the Bay of Campeche, western Gulf of Mexico, where the Climate Prediction Center, they make a two week forecast. So this is June 15th through the 21st into the third week of June. Uh, moderate confidence of maybe some tropical cyclone formation. Hopefully this ridge stays around through then and pushes anything toward Mexico. So something to keep an eye on, but not worry about for sure. Near term, it's all about the heat. Look at these heat indices tomorrow getting into the 100 degree range plus 100 to 105 and we'll do much the same going into Friday. Notice the effect of showers and storms off to the east of us will limit that those high heat indices and it only gets hotter back toward Texas as well with temperatures nearing the century mark without the help of the heat index. Heat index prime times usual time from noon till about 6 p.m. will be over that 100 degree mark somewhere between 100 and 105 for tomorrow afternoon. That's just below what we call heat advisory criteria. Usually it has to get to 105 to 110 and your overnight lows have to be closer to 80 degrees. So we're not there yet. 75 tonight. So cooling off a little bit and then for tomorrow we'll get back up to about 95 for a high. If we hit even 94 tomorrow, it'll make it the hottest day of the year. Notice the model going for a westerly wind. Thus, we're going to see temperatures in the mid 90s tomorrow, mid 90s Friday into the weekend, mid 90s all of next week and maybe even inching toward the upper 90s, believe it or not, toward the end of next week and into the following weekend. So a hot 10 day forecast and those overnight lows don't help as well when they start getting closer to 80 mm -hmm. degrees, yeah. which is going to be in the mix as well. And just on the edge of that heat advisory. Just, just right on there. the edge. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll issue them a little bit earlier just because we're not used to the high heat. Right. So we'll see if that happens at some point in the days ahead. Okay, okay. Thank thanks you, Rob. Rob. Still ahead tonight on KATC, the community continues to help out a downtown business affected by a recent fire. We'll have more on those efforts coming up. of Louisiana Seafood, Amanda Causey of Villa Harlequin in Lake Charles was crowned the second ever queen last night. She beat out 11 other chefs at the Louisiana Seafood Cook-Off. The award-winning dish was a pan-seared red drum over tomato polenta with a crawfish cream sauce. In St. Landry Parish, a recent graduate of the Magnet Academy for Cultural Arts is helping to beautify Opelousas. Ayla Voce painted the newest traffic box in Opelousas at the intersection of Union Street and Cresswell at Donald Gardner Stadium parking lot. It's part of the box art series, which transforms ordinary traffic boxes into vibrant public art. Lafayette's Black Cafe is getting more help in repairing damage after a fire a few floors above.